60 colors, 60. Look at all those colors. That's amazing. Okay, so I have all these acrylic paints. I think it's pronounced Arteza. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, one way or the other. Look at all the colors. There's 60 in this box. I'll put the link below on where you can purchase it. I won't need any of the reds or, oh yeah, I will need the browns for sand. Oh, this is cool. Look at all the colors. Lots and lots of colors. But I am going to need, and I'm glad I got lots of colors. They have one called sand. Naples yellow. Deep yellow, deep orca. Don't need reds. I may, we don't need all these colors. Cobalt blue, pearl sapphire blue, sky blue. These are the colors that I'm going to try. Now, what's great about this is you get 60 colors, so anything at all that you wanna make is in this pack, any color that you could possibly think of. So I am going to be using Pearl Sapphire Blue. Oh, is it upside down? Yes, of course. Pearl Sapphire Blue. Sky Blue. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this one yet because it looks so much like the Pearl Sapphire Blue. I'm definitely gonna be using Cobalt, Cobalt, <laughs> all right, I can't <laughs> Cobalt Blue. It's funny how things get stuck on your tongue. Yellow Orpha. And, sorry if they're upside down, Naples Yellow. They're the ones I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna get started. So I have my boards, and they're MDF boards. They are half inch. I have water to rinse my brush if I need it. I will be using titanium white also. And a plate to put my colors on. So I'm gonna start with the cobalt blue. Really? That's what it is. I'm probably gonna to have to use a lot of it because these are pretty big boards. Try these two colors since they look like against each other. Oh, this is like wow, that's like um pearly color. Oh, it's called pearl, that's why. Pearl sapphire blue. Duh. This is my light blue, but I'm gonna be mixing this with white at the bottom to get a light, light, light blue. So there's my colors. I have them on a plate. I'll list them below on what I'm using. I got my paper towels. In case I need them. Um... So I'm gonna start with the darkest blue. 
Actually, I like this pearl blue a lot. Maybe I'll start with that. That is really pretty. It's actually even darker than the, the dark blue. So I'm gonna start with that. So I started painting with these and I've noticed that the color is, the, the paints themselves are very concentrated. They're pretty thick and pretty amazing. Actually, my review on these paints are, my honest review is that I really like them a lot. I have tried just about every acrylic paint out there because before I started doing resin, I was doing acrylic painting and you know, there is brands that's not quite as good as the other brands, but my opinion and my honest review on Ar Arteza is that this is a very good, well-developed paint, and I will definitely keep using it. I am just going to finish the boards in different color blues, and they're the blues that I showed you on camera. I'm just going to do like, you know, start at the top with the darkest blue and work my way down to lighter blue and get um, lighter and lighter as I go down until I, you know, do the sand. So I'm going to do it in fast forward so you don't have to sit here for like an hour and watch me paint. I watched this video with this girl, heard it. Her video, YouTube video name is Painting from Key West. What an amazing artist. I wanted to give a shout out to her because she's the one that gave me the idea for this. And uh, I'll put all her information below. You guys need to check her out. So I am blending the colors into each other. Now, you notice that I always do the sides of my boards. That is so important. I cannot stress how important that is. Because remember, like, if people are just going to hang them on the wall the way they are, they're going to be floating paintings. They're not going to be framed out. So the sides must be complete as well as the top. I'm like OCD about the sides of my paintings. So don't forget... So I'm finishing up the bottom with the sand colors and I am doing them with the yellow colors that I pulled out and showed you on camera. And right now I'm um, just going to blend them in. When you're painting the ocean, get a little bit of creativity going. I actually, ha um, I'm doing just a regular ocean scene right now. And I am doing the blue sky with the blue ocean and the sand color. But if you want, you can get creative. And I, I've i actually done purple water with a little bit of silver and white going through it. And I have done silver sand. And it looked amazing. So you can really get creative when you're doing these. You don't have to do blues. Anything goes in the mind of an artist. <laughs> yeah, get creative, guys. As you can see, my boards are done, but now I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to add a little bit of different tones going through them. 
you know what? My husband just came up and surprised me with two more boards. He was like, since you got two done, why don't you make it a four piece? So I might just paint them off camera. But in the same exact way that I did these. And they're quality colors too. It's quality paint. I love it. I just wanted to share that with you. Well, off camera, I had a little bit. Okay, off camera, I had a little bit more paint on my plate. I did four boards. I did two more. These are a little bit darker, I think. Oh, no, lighter. These are lighter. Okay, I'm in my garage now. I am using Negged Fusion Resin Epoxy. It is a mixture of one to one. So if I'm using four ounces of hardener, I will use four ounces of resin. But in this case, the boards are pretty big. I'm going to be using eight ounces of hardener to eight ounces of resin on my first coat. Now, on my second coat, I will go down in resin because I'm not going to be doing quite so much. So, right now, I'm mixing the resin and the hardener together. Like I said, I'm mixing 8 ounces of resin to 8 ounces of hardener. I will be stirring it together for 3 minutes. I am pouring a little bit of resin in a cup. And as you can see, it's probably way too much. I don't really need that much. I should have did like an ounce of it. This is Resin Obsession White Ink for um, resin, actually. It's made just for resin. And it's pretty opaque, so you don't want to use too much. And I do put a little bit of white alcohol ink in there also. Now, if you don't have alcohol ink, you can just use 90% alcohol and just put like a little bit in your cup. I would say maybe half of a cap full. I'm gonna stir this up real good. And this is gonna be just for my wave. And don't forget, guys, wear your respirator. I don't care what the resin says. It says low VOCs, you know, no harmful fumes. Well, guess what? When you heat that up, it's a different story. So always wear a respirator when working with resin. Now, remember, I had a big cup of resin. What I did was I poured it into a little cup so I had more control. So I can control the uh, shape of the waves and where I want it to go. Now I'm starting with the waves and then working my way up. Now these are really big boards, so it's hard to get a good view. I tried a front view, um, it didn't work too well. So I'm doing this side view so you can see it a little bit better. I know it's not the best view in the world, but like I don't know how else to do it where it looks good. And I think this is a pretty good view. Now I'm just pouring more resin into my cup. So I, like I said, I'm doing the wave. That way I have more control. And working my way up with the resin. I even have trouble seeing the wave on, on the sand, unfortunately. But when I put the white on there, hopefully the view will be a lot better. If I just did one board, I would have been able to zoom in with the camera a lot closer. But unfortunately, I'm doing four. Now I can use the big cup because I don't need all that control over the resin. And I'm just pouring the rest of the resin onto the board. And I'll be smoothing it out with my glove.
I am done pouring the resin on and smoothing it out. Now I'm using the torch to pop all the bubbles and to smooth out the resin. And the torch helps level it out, pop the bubbles. It doesn't really move it around too much. And that's what I'm looking for. Here's my white that I'm gonna do the waves with that I mixed up earlier and showed you. And I'm just gonna do the tip of the wave. Now, unfortunately, the camera's not picking up the resin on the sand that I did, but when I pour on the resin, you'll be able to see what's going on better. I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit for you guys, but no matter what position I put it, it's just not picking up like the resin on the waves. Okay, I meant the resin on the sand, okay? So where I put the white is actually where the resin stops on the sand. So you wanna do it right on the edge of your resin. So unfortunately, I don't know why the camera's not picking it up. It's really bugging me, but unfortunately, you can't see where the resin stops. But where I'm putting the white is where the resin stops on the sand. And that will be my wave. So I didn't go all the way down on the board with the resin. I stopped it right there where the white is. And I'm going to go all the way up on all four boards with this. So I got a couple of little drips of resin where I didn't want them. So I got a piece of paper towel. I wet it with rubbing alcohol and I wiped the resin off where I didn't want it. So if you get a couple of drips on the sand like I just did, see the paper towel with the alcohol it takes it right off. I'm going to do my fourth and final board here with the white and I'm just following the edge of the resin where it stops. And you could put as much or as little as you want. If you want it to, the wave to be really white and thick, you can put a little bit more. Now, remember, if you have alcohol or alcohol ink in there, it's going to thin out quite a bit. when you use the heat gun on it. Right now I have my heat gun and I'm just pushing that ink straight up and I'm trying to make a wave. Now my heat gun, I have it on high and it's not very powerful. I've seen people do it on low and there's just blows it. Plus this, this resin is quite thick, so it doesn't push it around. If I was using art resin, I'd probably have my heat gun on low because it's quite a bit thinner resin. This is a quite a bit thicker resin, so I have it on high and I'm just pushing it up. And as you can see, it's thinning it out quite a bit. And it actually gives it like almost that foamy sea look. You know, when the wave comes in and it's foamy and thin, that's what I'm looking for because it's right on top of the sand. You can go down as far as you want onto the sand, which I think I should have went a little bit farther down, but it is what it is. I'm just pushing it up and making my waves. And anytime you see me wipe the board with the paper towels, you know I drip some resin somewhere. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's how it goes. But it does come right up, like I said. And always, I always go over my boards with... Um, my torch at the end just because it it kind of smooths out the resin now you see how thin that white got it's very thin but I like it like that that's my first layer of resin 
just a thin layer, a thin wave is what I meant to say. Um, and I will touch up the sides here and there. But that's about it. I'm going to let that cure for 24 hours, and then I'll be back tomorrow. It is 24 hours later, and I'm going to repeat the same exact step that I did in the first, the first 24 hours. This time I'm using a lot less resin. I only used four ounces of hardener to four ounces of resin. That's half of what I used on the first coat. Well, at least this time you guys can see my wave. You can see my resin, right? And unfortunately, um, I put the waves on a little bit too symmetrical. <laughs> like I did loop, loop, loop. And I didn't do them low enough because they should have been like right by the sand line and where the water and sand meet. Right now, I'm using my big cup and pouring the rest of the resin onto the boards. And I'll just repeat that process that I did in the first, the first um, layer. Unfortunately, again, you can't see where the resin starts and stops. I wish the camera could, maybe, I don't know, maybe I could put the camera lower the next time. I'm not sure what to do because obviously um, the camera's not picking up where I started the resin. Well, where I'm putting the white is where I started the resin. So I started about a few inches up from the last wave. And I'm doing the same process. I'm adding the white. And then I'm going to get my heat gun and blow dry it out. I am pushing the white up again to create that wave effect with my heat gun. This time I didn't add quite so much alcohol ink because I wanted it to be more opaque. I wanted the white to be a little bit more concentrated because I wanted the wave to be a little bit more concentrated. Um, but you know what I noticed as I'm doing this? See the line between the sand and the water, I should have put the wave right there, and I didn't. And I made them too loopy. So on my next layer, I'm going to have to fix all this, unfortunately. Which is a pain in the butt.
Okay, it's been another 24 hours. So yes, these paintings do take about a week to get done. I am mixing my resin again and mixing my white and doing everything that we did in the last two steps. But as you can see, those waves are kind of loopy looking. <laughs> they're, they're not exactly the best. So I have to fix this. Plus I have to lower them. Like you shouldn't be able to see the sand meet the water right there in such a straight line. So I'm, I'm actually gonna try to fix that. Okay, we're gonna do it a little bit backwards this time. I added the white first. That way I can see where my wave starts and stops because um, not only did the camera have trouble picking it up, but so did I actually. So I am doing the white and now I'm pouring the clear resin in between the waves that I created because I created kind of two separate waves. But as you can see, I still have that first wave. No, I, I had the second wave, but I'm actually taking that second wave away because it, it looked too loopy to me and it didn't look right. And I should have went down a little bit lower. So this should help it and make it all better. This resin's quite thick and the heat gun's not working like I want it to. So I'm gonna heat it up with my torch first and then blow dry it with my heat gun. Now I'm pouring the rest of the resin on the boards and I'm gonna smooth it in with my hands like I did in the first two steps. Doing the exact same thing. And this time I'm even using less resin. Okay, so now I finished smoothing my boards out. Well, not completely, but <laughs> they're good enough because I'm gonna to torch them and heat them up anyway, so they'll smooth out a little bit. But right now I am mixing in my Resin Obsession white and I was having trouble getting it out of the, the bottle. But I am adding a little bit of white here and there, as you can see. And I'm going to torch it up because like I said, this resin's kind of thick. And then I'll move it around with my heat gun. And that'll create more of white waves throughout but not really waves it just creates like a little ripple in the water so you just want to do a very thin line at the top of your boards oh this camera is driving me nuts i'm trying to get it so you guys can see what i'm doing but it just i unfortunately can't get it right but hopefully this helps a little I'm just going to show you these two boards. That way you can get a better look at what I'm doing. I'm actually just moving the pigment up and down in order to create just like a ripple in the water. And that's about it. And I'm going to show you the finished piece. So here's the finished piece. There's actually only like two waves, but... I'm happy with the finished piece. Let me know your thoughts on everything. Let me know your thoughts on the Arteza paint. I thought it was amazing. And the finished product. Come on, Doug. Let's go for a walk. Come on. Here. Come on. Come on, let's go for a walk.